my name is Peter McCormick. Um, we're standing here in Greencastle, or North Cape Seafoods in Greencastle. Um, this is my company I set up in 2013, and we're based here just opposite to the harbour in Greencastle. I spent um, my 20s, I actually worked as a fisherman. Um, I worked in Ireland briefly for a few years, and then I travelled across to Norway. Um, I was in Norway for eight years, and then after that, I actually got a job in the UK. I was buying fish for a company in the UK, and the opportunity came up to come back home. So me and my wife decided to pack everything up in England and come back here in 2014. Me and my wife, we, we wanted to come home. Um, we wanted a reason to come home, and we looked at what we were doing. Um, this was something I was this I was involved in this type of business in the UK, and I seen that you know my father actually built this property here, so I seen it was an opportunity to potentially come and look at new production techniques and more efficient, effective ways of doing doing business and. Uh, Based, based on mechanism and automation and we could make a living here in, in back in Greencastle. This place was built in uh, 1984 and the father, they ran it for, for 20 years. Um, the, the start of the end for this, for Greencastle sequence when it started out, was the, the failure of the, the fisheries on the north coast here. Quotas was a big one, the, there was lack of availability and um, there wasn't opportunities to diversify like there is now and um, I suppose he was at the end of his tenure of work and he, the, the business just they, they ceased, they ceased trading in 2006 so uh, there was an eight year an eight year pause and um, I say my father sadly passed away in 2012 but there was an opportunity we always talked about it and um, I just found that it was something I wanted to do. It was actually after his death that I decided that it was. I never had any desire to come home beforehand, but it just uh, it gave me the push to say, right, you're either doing this or you're not. And this was the, that was how my decision was made. Really, it was it was more it was desire than like there was some calculation on how much it would cost and how much business you would need. I knew it was going to be a struggle, uh, but um, I thought the hell with it. Get one goal, so let's try it. Yeah, the two of us like we had um, we had two very good jobs actually. With my wife, she was um, she was a teacher in London, and she she was actually on route to be a common school principal, you know. And I had my career as well. Like uh, there was buying for one of the one of the largest companies in the UK at the time, and there was career progression. Uh, they were like they were expanding those company that company across the UK. Um, it just didn't sit with me, you know. It was, you know, you, you either make your life at home or make it in London. Like London's, in, London was fine. Um, at that time, I'd, I actually would have, it was either come home or go back to Norway. I actually preferred my life in Norway to, to London, you know. Um, so it was almost a coin toss, you know. It was, but um, it was, it was hard for the two of us because we actually gave up two jobs at one time. Um, we actually, we came back. We got married in 2015. Um, my wife, actually, because she was trained in the UK, she didn't have the credentials to, to teach out in the south here. Like the, so there's a, quite a quite a long road you have to do there. So basically, she gave up her whole career as well and started those subbing in classrooms again. And basically, between the two of us, we got enough money every week for the rent, and we just carried on, you know. The amount, the amount of skills I learned by going away um, was huge. Like the, all our techniques, like even on our, on our like we, we defrost fish, we call it campering. You know, we, we do a large part of our business is working with frozen and sea fish, and we process it after defrosting. It's, it's a more structured. That's you know you're carrying your stock of frozen all the time, and then you defrost it to order. You know, it's, it means you can produce 365 days a year if you wish. And you're not tied so much to markets and the volatility and, and and plus it's it's frozen stock. It, it's very it's very safe business. And you, you, you've let there no wastage, you know. Uh, but I would never have learned. The, the Norwegians were pioneers of that in the in the 2000s, you know. And I would never have learned any of those. I, I didn't even know it existed before I went to Norway, you know. And uh, and then when I come back to the UK, I was shocked actually how much processing they were doing based on that type of production and 
nearly everything in retail at the moment is um, is frozen and defrosted. It's, it's it's frozen and defrosted to order. The, and also as well, the ships are bigger. They're more efficient. They can catch the fish quicker, and and it maintains the, the prices as well. You know. And uh, but in 2018, then we decided then that we would get back into the, because we had the stability of the, this frozen trade that we would get back into the fresh because there's better opportunities so you can buy you can buy when fish is plentiful and you can not buy when it when it's when it's not you know and and I think the two run in parallel to each other is a very good business model at the moment you know like even say back in my father's time like the, they were following their own road like they didn't actually have they were they were quite forward thinking for their time but actually the like the whole trade in Ireland you know it's has really progressed this last five, ten years, like you know, um, like even up to, you know, even in supermarkets now. Uh, when I was in the UK, we were the first company to do you know, the skin pack. You know, like everything's presented skin pack now. It was only in 2011 where the first company in the UK was doing it, and then shortly after, then a few bigger companies in Ireland were doing it for the for Tesco's and the Aldi and Little, but. It's it's all very very new. The, the like before that, people were just you know, there was fish were filleted, they were put on a fish counter and they were sold. And, and like, there's still businesses today that make a very good living at it, but it's a very uh, it, it's a very simple simple way of doing business. Again. We've gone down the road of technology. We're using technology as the like our business model is to automate and mechanize much of the process as possible basically to be for the main reason is to be cost effective and we can produce a lot higher volumes of fish than, than other companies in the area um, we can we can produce very quickly that that keeps the freshness of the product quicker um, and also as well because we have our frozen business alongside we can pretty much guarantee supply all, all year round like you know so we're not we're not we're not tied to the seasons so much, and um, but then we can make advantage of the seasons when they're there. Well, firstly, the main reason for buying the machine was to fix an age-old problem: is that small fish are very expensive to process. Um, labor costs now you're looking at upwards of 15 to 18 euros an hour, maybe up to 20 for good filleters, and they can't produce enough to you know. Whenever you have the filters paid, there's very little margin left. In the, whenever you're working on a competitive market, you know? um, so yeah, the problem of, of getting the skilled labour was one, paying the skilled labour, and also as well, the, um, is producing any 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 amount of fish that you could send anywhere at, at speed. So that was the main logic behind it was to was to cure a labour problem. Um, so. Like the machine is fully automated from start to finish, as, as you've seen in your recording. Um, basically, the fish go in into a tank. They, they get pre-washed. Um, they go, they be laid onto the machine then, and they they're measured. Every single fish is measured by a laser, um, so that it, it can tell the computer that the exact place to put, place all the knives every time the fish goes through. So it starts off with it cuts off the head, and then it splits the two fillets. And then finally, it takes off the bones, uh, the, the the pin bone at, at, at the end. And after that, the product goes on to a grader where we can grade them to customer requirements. So any any size dimension the customer wants, we can produce it. And then finally, then we have um, the the fish get skinned at the end of the line, and then they're packed and boxed and iced, and then they're off to their customer then. The byproduct then all goes in for um, it goes to a company then that makes uh, makes animal feed and um, they also make uh, pet food. So the, the skins go and be dried as treats and the the fish offal itself is mushed up and, and it is portioned and dried and it goes to turn into little dog biscuits for for uh, for that for the animals, you know. So uh, there, there's nothing that's wasted whatsoever. Absolutely. Not. In total, we have a, we have ten staff here. But with the help of the machine, we're probably doing the work of about 25. So uh, if you were doing it manually, um, when the machine's running at full production, you're up at 30, over 30 staff. So it's um, we say fully automated is that, that no 
no person has to take out a knife and put, and put it to the fish, bar maybe trim the odd piece of tail or, but it, it it requires it doesn't require a skilled workforce. So you, you can you can basically you, all you need is, 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 is pairs of hands, and you don't have the fear that you know whenever you train fillers, they're they're very high demand, they're very sought after because there's other companies that require it, could give them better money than you can and all of a sudden then your 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 skill sets down again. So it just takes the it just takes that danger away when you when you have the machinery there to do it. You know? And it's everything it make the job's a lot easier. You know, it's you know, um, people don't want to stand getting their hands wet all day, you know, with a small knife in their hand cutting these little fish, you know, it's it's just it's it's becoming throughout the whole country it's becoming a bigger as years go on it's it's getting more and more problem. The more we develop, you know, if, if we were able to develop more into different markets, different sectors, um, you know, at the moment we're producing from a lot of our trades business to business. Um, you know, if we, if we look at, you know, we, we opened the shop here as a as a trial, just to see how it goes, and if, if the retail offering is something that people people like in the future, maybe we'll, we'll look at that. You know. But it's like everything. Like at the moment, the it's very hard to prove your case at the moment um, with, until COVID goes away or there's some some solution there because like, the, there's no appetite for the banks or anybody to, let, to loan money at the moment and um, it's just um, I think we we just need to take the take the foot off it for a year or two now and just to see how everything goes. But again, it was a very difficult process. Like the you know from when we started looking for. We decided in 2017 we wanted to, to buy this machinery. You know, it was summer 2018 before we actually got it on site. So there was a lot of forward and back, and you know, and the plus as well because it was a new company. We it was almost a game of chicken and egg with the bank and Boris Gamara. Oh, okay, they funded us, they gave us like, they gave us grant aid on this, but one wasn't going to give the grant aid without the other and the bank wasn't going to give the, the loan without the, the BIM grant so you were sitting there at loggerheads for about six months convincing somebody to, to uh, <laughs> you know, con you're, you're convinced like eventually then it was they decided they, they, would, they would support it we put up a good enough case and they, they went with it you know um, I'm very optimistic actually I think um, when you look at the level of investment has gone into, like, we can do nothing without supply of fish. There's absolutely no way we can, unless the fish come into the world, we can't make a penny. Um, when you look at the level of investment that's been made on the harbour with the co-op there, um, they've built a fantastic facility for the future. and Hopefully it'll attract more boats in and more people to, to get into the trade. And, and also as well, the skippers are all, they've all upgraded and modernised their boats as well. So. We have a very good fleet here and a very strong and a young, 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 young skipper. So I think um, I'd say the industry's going to hang around for another while, yeah.